hi guys welcome to this video and in this video i'll be showing you how to use the turn api to build any application that needs you querying the turn blockchain so what is turn api turn api is literally a tool which you could use to query the turn blockchain easily without any hassle it's easy to use and the fun fact is even if you're a web 2 developer with no much experience in web 3 you could actually still use this API because it, it's built to be a REST API. You could use it and it's, you don't need much Web3 experience to query turn blockchain. It's easy to use, it's simple and it's seamless. So in I created a project to showcase um, the sample, to sample the power of turn API and how you could use it. And this is a ton transaction viewer. All you just have to do is you paste a ton address in the input view and hit search, and you get to see the wallet address details, the balance, and many other information that you will need from a wallet address. Basically, recent transactions and wallet details. So I'm going to walk you through overview of how to get started with turn api let's get started shall we so first off we are going to need to sign into our turn console reason is because turn console is where the be we can get our bearer token our author, authorization token to use in our call and without it our calls are going to return with a cost error we need to log in with our telegram to get access to the, the turn console so let's get that sorted out okay so now we are in and if you're in for the first time you're going to see your dashboard as laid out before you and you get to see some other features. You see your turn keeper messages, your payment tracker, your turn analytics, your NFT, and your JetSon, turn testnet assets, balance, and settings. What we're interested in is in the turn API section for now. So we just click that and you get to see our pricing, right? We are on the free version right now. And the free version, we are entitled to one request per second one real-time connection and we can watch up to five accounts for each connection i think that's enough for us in this our application because we are just making two calls right so let's go and check our api keys and i've already created one for our sample application so for you you have to create a new one and this is how to create a new one you just click the create api key fill it whatever name you want to you can name it um say transaction viewer transaction viewer and we tick the allow webhook management in case you want to use webhooks and we click create and there we go we have our new api key we can copy it or you can keep it safe for when we need it in our code so let's go to the code and give you a very brief overview of our code base. So here we have our code and this is just a basic front end application built with React TypeScript, Tailwind CSS for styling and Lucid React for our icons. And we have everything imported, what we need and I'm going to give you an explanation of the code so that we can understand what's going on. So first off, we have our interfaces. Now the interfaces is wallet data on our transaction interface. This is preparing us for the response that we are going to be getting from each of these calls. Remember, we are making two calls. So we need our wallet data and our transaction interface to make two calls to get like predict the type of response we'll be receiving. This is why we have 
those. Now, the next is our components. We have our component, which is Stone Transaction Viewer, and we have our states. We set, get the states for our address, the input field. When we input our address, we have our wallet data state to store our wallet data when we've made the call and gotten the response. And the default is null. We have our loading state and we have our error state. Now, up next is our function. Now, this function takes care of everything once the button is hit. And in, it's an async function because we're going to be making some asynchronous calls. And the first thing is our, the first thing is the if statement to check if the address is being used. If not, it returns an error. We now have our base URL. This is important because without this URL, we can't make the endpoint. And if you can check the Swagger API, that's the docs, return API docs, you could see that we have our base URL being given to us. This is the official base URL and it's what I use in the code. Now we need two endpoints to make our calls, right? And the first endpoint is this one, is a get request. And if you can see the format, you know that this is what is needed. And this is our output response. These are expected response if we make the call right. And you could see everything is well sorted out. And now that, that's that. The second endpoint that we'll be needing is this one. And with this endpoint, we get to see the transaction details of a particular wallet address. So this is the expected response. And as you can see, the information, it gets the event for an account. Each event is on top of a trace in a series of transactions. So we get to see the transaction details with this call. So those are the, yeah, you can see that. This, are the, this is the expected response. Now that's good. Now, this is why we need this two interfaces for that response. Now we get our base URL and we get our token. And the token, remember, we got it from our tongue console, right? Where we created our new API key. I'm going to still keep using my sample application turn API key, but you could use yours. And so we store it in a variable. Now next we have a try catch statement. This statement is where we are going to make the calls. We make a fetch call, it's a get request. We pass in the first endpoint with the base URL and the address provided, as you can see here. And we store it in a variable called account response. It's a get request. And remember, we need to pass our header with the authorization token. Without this, our call is going to have errors. Always remember to pass your BRA token. Then after that, we have a uh, conditional statement to check if the account response is valid. And if it's not, it throws an error. But if it's valid, we move to the next block, which is we store the account response in a new variable because it's been formatted into a JSON so that it can be easily readable. Now we have our account data being stored in the account data variable and I console.log that variable so that we could see it on the browser. We could see our raw data on the browser. So next call we are making, remember the next endpoint, same as before, we make a fetch transaction, a fetch call, I mean. We add the endpoint, fill in the address and we make the events and limit it to 10 so that we can only see 10. We could do more, we could do 20, but let's go with 10. Same as before, method gets, and we use our headers, same as before. I know that this is a bit repetitive, but I'm just doing this for sample, right? So in your code, you have to 
be a bit more professional. Also, it's not professional to store your access token in the front end. It's best to use a, a .env file or you use your back end and create it, then pass it through the front end. So that's that. Let's proceed. So same try catch statement as before, same header. We also run the if uh, conditional statements. Yes, yeah, same same header. We store it in the transaction response. We run the conditional statement to check if the transaction response is valid. And once it's valid, we move to the next block, which is we store the JSON format and we console the log it into the browser so that we can see our transaction data raw. I did that on purpose so that we could see that, okay, we've called this ton API and you can see the blockchain details before we start processing it. Now, everything after that line 77 is just processing the API response. And we could quickly go through it. We map through the transactions data and it's stored in the process uh, transaction variable. And all we just do here is formatting. We format the dates, we format the time, we format the address so that everything comes out neat and clean. And it is all passed into our front end components. Okay. If you can look closely, you can see that it's just formatting. It's just a bunch of formatting using pass ins converting to local string and that's basically it it's all tied to the button which on click runs the handle search function right and the handle search function runs the whole block of code from here way down way down so that's literally the logic of the code and you could see the two calls now if you've if you can do this right you should be able to see something on your browser so let's go to our front end and check remember to run your front end locally and when you start the server you should see our page so let's go check it out So refresh the page and I'm going to also show you the console so that we can see the raw data shown to you in the browser. So here we go. We have our page well refreshed and we we'll clear these extra errors here. Not from the web page by the way. And we get a turn address and we hit search and here we go we see our account data and our transaction data and if you open our transaction data you could see it's it's in an array of objects and you could see all the events laid out before us event id our account the timestamp all the details that you can play with is available to you by making the call that's the transaction data call, by the way. And just like in the transaction data, in the account data too, you could see that's our first call. You can see the details, our address, formatted address, the balance, the time it was active, and so many other things to play with. So you can literally see that data being used here you could see the balance you could see the status you could see ton tra total transactions the last time it was active the formatted address and here is the second endpoint that we called the recent transactions you could see when it was sent the amount sent to and the from wallet and so many other things and this is done just by calling the ton api simple and easy so as you can see, it's not even stressful at all. It's easy. And I have pushed the code to GitHub. The GitHub repo link is in the description. 
thank you very much. Uh, I'm encouraging you to keep building. Bye.